In the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can create this house design without knowing anything about ARCHICAD at all. Okay, so today we're gonna to be starting with a standard ARCHICAD 25 template. I'm using my own custom template that I'm developing for you guys. So it is very bare bones at the moment. You can use whatever template is available to you. It'll be very much the same process. So if we start with ARCHICAD 25 open, ready to go, we usually start with the very blank canvas itself. On the left hand side here, we're gonna have all of our toolbars and all of our options that we require to be able to create what we are trying to do today. So what we're gonna be doing today is creating a very simple A-frame house design. So if we use our view map or even our project map, we can come across to our ground floor, double click, and make sure we're on the correct floor that we need to be working on. Next, we're gonna select our slab tool. We're gonna to click once. We are gonna show our layer and then we're gonna change it to the basic rectangular method of drawing a slab. Now, simply dragging out that slab without clicking and holding is gonna give you all sorts of dimensions. I personally wanna make this about 10 meters wide. So I'm gonna type in 10,000, press the tab button and I wanna make it 20 meters long. So I'm gonna type in 20,000. Now, if I wanted to move this slab, all I'd have to do is select the slab, press Control or Command D for David to be able to move it around. Next, I'm gonna click on this slab, go Command T for Tomic, and then change the actual ground floor layer or the home story. I want that to be on the footings layer or whatever you have designated in your story settings to basically drop it one level down. Now, because it is calculated from the bottom of the sill to the top of the actual floor, I wanna increase that by 250 millimeters and press OK. What you'll see is that slab has completely disappeared on us. So right click on the footings layer and go show as trace reference. So then we'll see our actual slab that we drew a second ago in this trace reference section. Now to create our A-frame, we wanna to come to our wall tool. We want to select our outside face and then select some sort of wall structure that we're gonna be using to construct this and draw all the way up, clicking once, repeating that same step again on the other side. Now what you'll see is basically two very, very basic walls with nothing interesting going on. So if we come to our marquee tool, let's marquee everything we've drawn so far, right click, so show marquee in 3D window. And all of a sudden we have a 3D window, two walls and a basic slab. Now what we wanna do is select one of our walls on the left hand or the right hand side, click Command T again for Katomic. So now we wanna angle our wall over across to the right hand side or closer to that A-frame. So if we click on this angled wall section, traditionally 90 degrees, 45, 135. So if we go 135 as a starting base, we're gonna see that is quickly changed to a A-frame style. Repeat the same process on the opposite wall, give us 135 on that opposite wall as well. Now what we need to do is actually extend the length of our wall to a certain point. So if we select both of these walls, Command T again, we do not link any of our top stories and let's just change that to five meters for now. The reason I initially went with five meters is because my slab is 10 meters long, which means five meters, five meters. But what I didn't account for is the thickness of the actual walls themselves. Now, in this instance, we have a five meter high overall A-frame which is basically gonna only be enough for one single story. If we wanted to make this larger or taller in any single way, we would simply just adjust the angle of these walls to be able to increase the pitch and therefore give us more height in the upper floor. Personally, I do think we need more height. So I'm gonna change both of these up to about 120 degrees. And there we go. Now I've increased both of these wall heights to 8.44 meters at 120 degrees, which by tapping the M button opens my measuring tool. It indicates to me that I have 8.44 meters in the center of that ridge to basically use as grand space. Coming back into my floor plan, I'm then gonna click the escape button, hold the option or the alt button, depending on what system you're on, and draw the two external walls. What you'll find is those external walls are also pivoting and we don't want to do that. So Command T, let's just simply make them straight walls and they have to be new construction if you're using renovation layers. I'll duplicate that same process on the opposite side and then come back into my 3D layer. So now what you see in 3D is an automatically cropped external wall aligning with our other walls that are basically defining our roof structure. Coming back to our ground floor plan, we wanna basically create an alfresco or a cove, some sort of entryway at the front of our building. So I'm gonna call this the front for the simple purposes of argument. Press, click once on this external wall, Control Command D, click on an external edge, hold Shift, and then I'm gonna move that 
two and a half meters back. What that's gonna create is that alcove I'm looking for, and then I'm simply gonna change the materials of the external walls. So by selecting all of the external walls and holding shift and holding down the mouse wheel, I can move around, press command T to open up the settings, and then I can change the actual external color and material of these walls. For the purposes of this, I'm simply going to go with a color bond basalt or a dark gray color, press OK, and then I'm gonna change the other materials that I need to look a little bit nicer. So these two walls as an external feature, you're gonna see the inside of that lining the cladding. So then I'm gonna change that to a nice timber. If you are in the architecture industry, a student or anything of the sorts, make sure you check out davidtomich.com.au down below for all of your architectural requirements. One of the best items on the website is a construction checklist. It is the fundamental basic guide that you need to know and understand if you're producing any sort of architectural documentation. So now we have our A-frame house with a very basic understanding of walls, slabs. Next, we wanna talk about our doors and our windows. So then if we come up to our door tool, we can go to our door settings up the top and select a number of variety of different doors. You can scroll through, use any one of these doors that you see fit for your project. But for the purposes of argument, I'm simply just gonna use the basic door 25 and I'm gonna drop it roughly in the middle of this project here. What you can see is it's a very, very small door compared to the rest of the project because it is a very grand A-frame house. Coming back to our floor plan, you're gonna see that door automatically inputted into our program so you don't have to go and double up regardless of where you make the change, which is one of the best advantages of 3D software. Now I'm gonna simply come into my window tool and repeat that exact same process, selecting some sort of window from the standard windows available in RCAD 25. Let's select that one and introduce it both sides of our door. Now what you see is those windows are not the right place for me, they're not the right color, there's a number of things wrong with them. So if we select both of our windows at once, Command T opens up our settings. Now if we click on this elevation tool up the top, the front, we're gonna be able to see what our window looks like from an elevation. Next, we're just gonna change both of those to a fixed glaze window for the purposes of argument. Come down to model attributes and we're gonna change our actual framing materials if we wanted to. So for now, I'm just gonna change them to a nice dark black color. Pressing OK changes all of those materials like we said before, and then I can simply select on one of these windows and adjust it closer to my door, adjust the height in the same manner by selecting the up and down tool, and then I can also adjust the actual overall height of that window by simply selecting the adjustment tools available when you click on one of the nodes. Last but not least, I wanna adjust this door. So I'm gonna open up those settings. Let's go to a HV grid and simply change the door frame to a nice black as well. Pressing okay, we have the very beginning of our A-frame house designed and completed. If we then wanted to introduce an additional floor into this project, we could select our ground ceiling, go to our slab tool, replicate the slab below. Now what we find is our slab tool is sticking out completely too far. So we're gonna select our slab, click on this blue line, go to our perimeter or offset edge adjustment tool and simply drag that to the inside of our walls where we need it to actually be. Now, if we click on our little running man down the very bottom left-hand corner, explore, you're gonna get the basic 3D controls. I don't really need to see that again. So let's explore in 3D, fly inside our house and we're gonna be able to see we've created that floor. We've got a second floor and we can continue to basically develop this exact same concept we just talked about with the windows and the doors on the first floor. Now what I've simply gone ahead and done is selected a triangle window instead of the basic windows that we use down here below and extended these two windows to match our triangle window above. If I wanted to replicate this wall on the back side without having to do all of that again, I could count back down to our ground floor, select this wall, Command D, press the Option or Alt button, Control M to mirror, click, click, delete our external wall, and then reposition our wall at the very end. Last but not least, I would again drag that in 2.5 meters to make it symmetrical. Select the slab, bring it halfway into our property so it's only a mezzanine floor rather than an entire floor. And then that way, if we were to fly back into our house once more, we'd basically see a very simple mezzanine concept on the back side, a grand entry space on the front side, 
and we can simply just create a set of stairs, a balustrade, and introduce some furniture whenever we're ready. And that's all from me. My name's David Tomich, and I'll see you next Monday.